I just heard this amazing creator. I tagged her below. And she's, she's basically saying in a video that I just watched by her that the one of the greatest powers that a woman can have is her financial independence. And she said something that I was like, put it on a t-shirt, I'll take 14 of them. She said, I don't care how much money your dad has. I don't care how much money your boyfriend has. I don't care how much money your husband has. How much money do you have? You. And wait, no, no, don't tell me to hold on, Savannah. Wait, you hold on. Don't give me this speech about, well, my boyfriend says was his is ours and, and, and my husband, we were team and we, uh, 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 uh. How much money do you have? And this creator goes on to also say, if the answer is none or very little, you need to figure out a way that you can make some. There was a creator on this app that I watched last year. I hate that I didn't favorite the video or save it, but she was a stay-at-home mom. And she said that her and her husband, they don't have any issues or anything like that, but they had this heated dis disagreement. And the way he walked away from their disagreement and said, okay, it shook up something within her and her life kind of flashed before her eyes because she was like, there was something in how he said it and his whole attitude in that moment that quickly showed me that this man has the power to pull the rug right from under me and take everything and I'd be screwed. Listen, yes, you can get a prenup. Yes, you can put them on child support. Yes, you can go to, go to court. Prenup, post nup, this nup, that nup, every nup, everybody gets a nup. But what people fail to realize is a lot of those nups can be argued and modified and changed. And, it, and as far as alimony, that's not something that's easy to get a judge to order someone to pay. That's not just something that, oh, you're the wife, so I'm, I'm just going to grant. That's not, it's not easy to get that. Um, and it's rare that it actually happens. Um, I know for right now that your man is a hardworking man and goes to work every day. But let me tell you, just because a judge orders him to pay child support does not mean he's actually going to pay it. I know men... And I've also lived it. Men who went to work every day, woke up on time, great work ethic. And then once they were ordered to pay child support, faked a disability, uh, started working under the table so they wouldn't get tracked by the government, moved out of the city, moved out of the state, moved out of the country to avoid paying child support. Men who were once loving, amazing, hardworking husbands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and spare me the speech about how your partner loves you. <laughs> Uh, and he would never do anything, girl. I said this before and I'll say it again. There's this myth that the only type of people who get divorced are the people who had signs all along and they should have known better and they had time to prepare. There are women who get dropped. Like, suddenly. Wake up one morning and roll over to snuggle with their man and he gone. People pass away suddenly, no warning, no plan. You might wake up and change your mind and say, you know what? I, I can't do this anymore. But now you're at the mercy of this man. And now you got to stay with him until you can get slowly save money. And, and also you could easily say, well, you know, I'll just save money over time and I'll take $5 here and there when I go to the grocery store. Okay. How long are you going to have to save $5 here and there to get enough money to leave? That could take years. And during that time, think of all the stuff that you will probably have to endure. And you ain't going to be able to do nothing about it. If you object to this message and messages like it, my question is, why don't you want to always make sure you're in a situation to be okay, regardless of what the other party does or does not do? I feel like that's a form of self-harm. I really feel like that's a form of self-harm to say, to, to be willing. It's like, it's almost, I hate to use it, I hate to use this word, but it's almost delusional 
to say, I love somebody so much that I don't care what happens to me. I'm going to put all my trust in them and I'm not going to make a plan. Uh, Self-harm isn't even the word. It's got to be, you, you hate yourself. You have to hate yourself. And it, especially if you don't have children, that's insane. You love someone so much. Okay, if you don't care about yourself, fine. I can't help you. But that's a whole nother level. That's inhumane to love someone so much that you're willing to put yourself in a position to where if they walk away or whatever, your kids won't even be financially okay. What? I don't love anybody in this world enough to gamble my financial security or to gamble with the financial security of my children. I don't love anybody that I don't love anybody that much. I'm I'm sorry. I always want to know I'm okay. I got this regardless of whether you're here or not and my kids will be okay regardless of whether or not you're here. It's insane. It's insane to not want to make sure you're always going to be okay. And, and we're taught to believe that doing that is selfish. No. It's, it's crazy not to always make sure you're okay. And to not always make sure that your kids are going to be okay.